campaign of presidential candidate this time, Donald Trump, brought the issue of anti-Islam. And surprisingly, brothers and sisters, this campaign has a big support of public. So, what do you think behind this phenomenon? What does it indicate? No, I believe that uh, we find that anything which is popular, mm. they do have enemies. Yeah. And Allah says in the Quran that every prophet had enemy. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the last prophet will always have enemy. So I feel that people like Donald Trump, mm -hmm. they prove the Quran right. Allah says in Surah Furqan chapter number 25 that there will be an enemy for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And since Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, going to, his message is going to be till eternity, they are bound to be critics and enemies of, of Islam and, and of Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So these people are proving the Quran right because in spite of all these things, Islam is spreading. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 54, Allah says, they plan and plotted Allah to plan. Allah is the best of planner. If you see after 9-11, the media war on Islam and throughout the world, normally people should think that now Islam should perish now, yeah. which they cannot. But we find that more people want to know what kind of religion is this. And we find that in USA alone, in a span of of about nine months after 9-11, 34,000 Americans accepted Islam. In Europe alone, in a span of 10 months after 9-11, more than 20,000 Europeans accepted Islam. So more they are trying to attack Islam, more Islam is spreading. I believe that such type of people, in the long run, it is benefit for Islam. People want to know what is this religion. And whenever people attack Islam, and you find that in the long run, it benefits Islam. Oh. All right. That's fantastic. Now, uh, Dr. Zakine, do you agree if I say that now Muslims are caught up with efforts to restore the image due to Islamophobia campaign in the West? So because of this, they forget to promote noble values of Islam. Yes, I do agree with you. Yeah. Many a time, the, the Muslims being emotional, yeah. we fall into the trap. Mm -hmm. For example, we know what happened uh, in the Danish cartoons. Yeah, Danish. It is wrong what they did. We found that most of the Muslim organization, they left everything what they were doing and they were concentrating on that. They were protesting. Fine, we should protest. Yeah, but correct. that doesn't mean that we stop our activity. Mm -hmm. So if an organization mm -hmm. was supposed to uh, doing 100 points work, they focus all their attention on replying to the Danish cartoon yeah. And out of 100, they only do 5 points work. So imagine if all the organization do that, it will be a loss for the Muslim Ummah. Okay. What we require, there should be specialized organization to take care of this. And I've given a, a talk on this, how this should be dealt. What we do, we become emotional. Fine, we disagree with it. But don't become so emotional that whatever positive work you are doing, you also stop that. Yeah. So if we are attacking Islam, we don't leave everything. You leave everything and you only go and reply to that. I mean, for example, as I told you earlier, that anyone, that they're bound to be criticized on him. I mean, for example, if you go on the Google and if you type my name, there'll be about approximately 15 million uh, websites yeah. which has my, yeah. has my information. I would say approximately 15 to 20% would be against me. So when a person gets popular, mm -hmm. they're bound to be enemies. Yeah. Initially, I, I had a perception that when anyone gets popular, the percentage of enemy remains the same. For example, if there are 100 followers, then one is enemy. If you have 1,000 followers, then 10 is enemy. If you have a million followers, then there will be 10,000 enemy. Mm -hmm. The 1% remains the same, or 2%, or 10%, or the percentage, it remains the same. But later on, I realized that it's not like that. If you see the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad when he started preaching Islam, initially he had five followers, no enemies. It became 50, 100, no enemies. When it started increasing, then the enemies started appearing. Today, the most popular human being in the world 
Ibn Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even according to Michael H. Hart, even according to non-Muslims, the most influential human being in the world is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today, if you know that there are about 1.8 billion Muslims, mm -hmm. and maybe another 100 more million, maybe non-Muslims who may be like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can say 2 billion Muslims who, who may be like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But those who are against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be more than 2 billion. Yeah. So because of the popularity, then the percentage of enemies keep on increasing. Yeah. Here's a question uh, I read in my, uh, our Facebook followers. They ask, how do you manage your emotion and your wisdom and your spiritual when there is a, some people hate you, say something bad about you? How do you manage it? See, one thing, a guy should always be calm. He cannot get emotionally carried away. Yeah. If somebody criticizes me or, or abuses me, yeah. if I retaliate emotionally, then I will not be following the Quran. Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 125, Udu ila sabili rabbika hasna yeah, Hassan. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and with preaching and argue with them oh. and reason with them in the ways that are best motivations. Allah also says in the Quran in Surah Fusila, chapter number 41, verse number 34, that if that if that it says that repel evil mm -hmm. with good. And you will find that the person who hates you, he becomes your friend. Yeah. So repel the evil with good. Oh. So whenever anyone criticizes me. Normally, first, when there were very few criticism, we used to reply. Now, on the net, there will be about two to three million criticism. Yeah. Now, if I'm going to reply to two to three million criticism, I will not be able to go forward. I will spend the next ten years replying. <laughs> what I do, there are other people replying. They should do it. Yeah. No problem. Mm -hmm. What I tell my staff and my friends, that when anyone criticizes me, check if there is something in it for me to learn. Mm -hmm. I'm a human being, yeah. I can make a mistake. So if there is something where I have really made a mistake, and if it is a positive criticism, I should change. I don't say I'm infallible, I'm a human being. So first I look in that criticism, is there something which is substance, yeah. and something which is for me to improve? Almost all the criticism, okay. or more than 95%, they are more of allegations, quoting out of context, and you know, not nothing. But yet, if there is something for me to improve, then I utilize that. Mm -hmm. Because there's a saying that if someone throws bricks at you, yeah. use that brick to raise, to make your house. Yeah, correct. If someone throws a stone at you, raise yourself so high, the stone does not reach you. So therefore, I believe it is a waste of time to answer to all these things. Uh -huh. If there is something really which is worth answering, uh -huh. maybe less than a percent, uh -huh. then it's worth answering. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Yeah. This is like one more question from our follower. They, uh, they want me to ask you about Malaysia. They say that Malaysia has worked hard to promote that Islam is the religion that promote peace and moderation. So in your opinion, uh, what can be, what is the impact that can be seen from this effort in Malaysia, from your point of view? As far as Malaysia as a Muslim country is concerned, I always looked up to Malaysia compared to the other Muslim countries, a multiracial country where Muslim land majority, but not in absolute majority. Yes maybe 55 to 60 percent. You have Hindus, you have Christians, you have Chinese, you have Buddhists. And it is an advanced country. So as far as Malaysia is concerned, in compared to other countries, I feel it is one of the few Muslim countries that had the guts to challenge the Western world. Otherwise, most of the Muslim countries, they don't have that guts. Yeah. So I feel that we should be proud of our religion, proud of our culture, yeah. and we should not be apologetic. Yeah. And that's what I find in Malaysia. Alhamdulillah. 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 Proud to be. And at the same time, in Malaysia, there is a claim that uh, comparative religion is not suitable in Malaysia. 
is not relevant. Irrelevant because Malaysia is a multi-racial country. So we will find answer after this. We take a break for a while. Stay tuned. It's perception.